Get ready? Good evening, everyone. I mean everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the November Town Commission meeting in the town of Ocean Ridge. Tracy, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Ascom. Present. Commissioner Bonfiglio. Here. Commissioner Cause. Here. Mayor Pugh. Here. And please let the record show that Commissioner Lucibella is absent and sends his regrets. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we call the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. All right, you see before you the meeting notes. Is there any additions, deletions, modifications? None? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Motion second. Um, sorry, you're just approving the agenda as presented, not yet consent agenda. The agenda, just the agenda. Just the agenda. Yeah. I'm sorry. Second. There's a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, folks. You notice that we moved. I thought it was appropriate that we move the town commission items to the front just before public comment. And the reason for that is to let's get right to it. Um, I don't think there's any reason to um, hold back. Now, the couple of questions I've most, the two most important questions I've gotten from phone calls, emails, talk in the street is what are you gonna do about it? And how do you feel about it? Well, there's a problem with both those questions because as a town commission, we have certain, when you're up here, it becomes public record. So what we say becomes public record. Now, this could cause a problem for the town. And how this causes a problem in the town, I'm going to defer to our attorney, who if we've looked in the last couple of weeks, been doing our due diligence on exactly what we are allowed to say, what we can say, what, we're, what we're, we can and cannot do. So without any further ado, Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Mayor. Um, so give the short answer and then an explanation. So the short answer is I would advise you not to say or make comments as a commission, of course, uh, on this pending matter, as it is a pending matter and there is still an investigation ongoing, as in terms of what action, if any, you can take as to uh, the seat, um, none. Uh, there's no authority for the town commission to take any action uh, as to the commissioner. Uh, the explanation is, um, there are uh, certain standards of conduct, but all those standards of conduct relate back to uh, two primary laws. There's the Palm Beach County Code of Ethics and there's the State Code of Ethics. And all of those um, provisions relate to mostly conflicts of interest, doing something for your own personal private gain. None of them apply to the situation that we're facing at this point. So um, there's no authority for the commission to take any action as to um, the serving, continuing to serve on this commission uh, by the commissioner. However, the governor's office uh, <coughs> may have authority at some point, uh, depending on if there are criminal charges filed, then the, the governor's action has the right to uh, suspend the person from office. So that's kind of where the ball is in the, at some point, maybe in the governor's court. Um, in terms of whether you should make comments on it, again, I'd advise you not to, only because there is an ongoing investigation. We don't know where it's going to wind up, and anything that the commission, you know, not to use the police vernacular, can and will be used against you, but certainly certainly can be used against the commission if there's ever any litigation involving this. So uh, certainly the public can comment. I'm sure, as we've talked about, we know that everyone will be respectful in their comments, but in terms of the commission, I'd advise you not to engage in this topic. Okay, <clears throat> so you've heard what the York town attorney has to say, and let's face it, I'm, you know, I understand the frustration and the anger and things of that nature. However, there is still an ongoing investigation. So until that is complete, I think it would be irresponsible for the town commission to do anything until all the facts are in. It could be also costly to the town. So with that being said, now you know all that we know and what we're allowed to do. So if there's public comment, before we have public comment, I just want to recognize one person in the audience. 
we have a distinguished guest, Karen Hansack is here, our old town clerk. <laughs> Guess she wanted to see the fireworks too, but. The, <laughs> so, with any other, uh, we'll go ahead and start with public comment. We'll start on the right side. Lady, right side, right side. Oh. Betty, you're up. Ocean Avenue, to be completely off subject, I just want to thank the town uh, manager for having made the county get a valve to put on that blooming pump so we won't flood Ocean Avenue any longer and it should be done by Christmas. It only took 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Betty. <laughs> Ted? Ted Rito to 4 Hudson Avenue. Um, I'm not going to comment on what's going on. I have a simple question. I know you guys have your work cut out for you. The question I have to the town attorney is, uh, so that business can still be conducted, is there any way that we have a tiebreaker in event that there's a 2-2 vote on the four commissioners that are probably going to be here at the next couple of meetings? Do you want me to respond? Yes, sir. No, I'll have to. No. Uh, grapple with it until they come to a decision. That's two to two until somebody changes their mind and makes it three to one, and the matter would just be continued on until the next meeting. Okay, in that case, I hope you guys do the best you can to not have us in a stalemate. Well, for the thing too is, long. You, Ted, the one thing I this is bringing attention there is only four meetings left before the next election, not counting tonight's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, we've been, this commission has thought together most of the time during the last three years, so I. I have a feeling that we'll, we'll muddle through it and I'm be able to. I'm sure you'll do the best you can. And, ho and God bless you for uh, what you're having to deal with. Thank you, Ted. <clears throat> Next person. Okay, on the left side, Terry. Your left. <laughs> My left, that's right. I'm going to make some comments, and all due respect to the lawyers. Uh, everybody has a lawyer. You have a lawyer, very good lawyer. Uh, and Commissioner Lucibella has a very good lawyer, an excellent one, probably more than one lawyer. And the police officers involved also have lawyers through their police unions. But these folks don't have a lawyer that represents them. It, that's your responsibility as commission members to represent the town. <coughs> now, in, in, in respect to the attorney um, comments, there is a provision in the charter, and all the municipal corporations have a similar provision that a person can forfeit their office based on their conduct and behavior and violation of the law. And I know he's reviewed that and he's given you advice, but you, only you, the four of you, can make a decision to remove Commissioner Lucibella from the commission. That doesn't affect anything else. That's in the charter, and that's your responsibility to review that provision without advice of counsel. That he can't tell you what to do. He only can give you advice. And most of the people that I've spoken to, I imagine you've spoken to, to plenty, most of the people I've spoken to think it's time for Commissioner Lucibella to be removed from the commission by forfeiture of office, and there's a provision which you can do. You can grant him a hearing, it's clearly in the qualification of the charter. And, you know, we talk about th this particular individual in our town that has already done, as you point out, good things. He's managed to get the previous police chief fired, which cost us thousands of dollars. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I mean, there's, there's uh, he's lost, directly lost through, a, through his relationship with people, the Briny Breeze's contract, everybody knows that's what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't properly uh, negotiated as far as I'm concerned. The, you should have brought the price down and taken the contract. You didn't do that. So he has done things that have cost us a lot of money. Now this may end up costing us more money, but it's not because you will make a decision uh, under the charter which allows you to remove someone from office. 
Now, I know the, the attorney has boxed everybody in by saying you can't talk, but you need to think, read that section of the charter, and make a decision for the benefit of the, uh, of, of the residents, for representing the residents, not protecting another member, an out of control member of the commission. We are fortunate he didn't grab an AK-15 and come running out of his house. Okay, just. <laughs> All right, just for the record, Mr. Brown supposes that the town commission basically has done nothing in the last two weeks, which That's is entirely, said. excuse me, you had your chance. That's what I said. Don't be there is, there is a section in the charter. It's section, I have it right here. In fact, it was Monday when we got this from Monday to Saturday after the incident that we got this, or I got this from their town attorney. It's section 3.06, vacancies, fortress of office, filling of vacancies. This is what Commissioner Brown is talking about. And it's section B. And it says, forfeiture of office, a commissioner shall forfeit his office if he, one, lacks at any time during his term of office any qualification for the office prescribed by this chapter or by law, or two, violates any standard of conduct or code of ethics established by law for public officials such violations to be determined by remaining members of the commission. Now, that is true. However, we still at this point have an ongoing investigation by our own police department. And until that investigation is over, I extremely disagree with Mr. Brown in that nothing should be done until after that investigation is over, until we have all the facts. And then we can look at everything we have to use at our disposal. But until then, you need to have a little patience. I would ask you to have a little patience to make, let the chief do his job that we pay him for in our police department, get the information that we need, and at that time, then you can make a quality decision because any decision you're gonna make is gonna affect people's lives. It could affect all of our lives and fiscally. It could cost this town a few dollars. And it could also affect the two lives of the two people that were involved. So I'm just asking that, yes, I understand the frustration. However, there is a point to where you have to have patience in order to get all the information. That's all I'm asking. Well, has anyone contacted the governor's office about asking him to do the move? Well, you have to wait to, well, I can let the town attorney, but the thing is, wouldn't you wait? Well, excuse me, Terry, please. Yeah, excuse me. The thing is, the, the, what the, the, the state attorney hasn't even make, made their determination yet either. I, I checked the, the docket today, mm -hmm. and, and they, the charges are returnable by December 8, I believe. They have to be filed by December 8, according to... Um, Judge Burton, I think, has been assigned the so, case. So, I mean, this it just takes time. It's been two weeks. So this is going to take a little bit more time to get this settled out. And I know that everyone, everybody wants to have a quick decision, get it done and get it over with, get it out of our lives, but you have to make sure you have all the facts to make a proper and right decision. That's all I'm asking. Mr. Mayor, two things. Um, you know, we all grew up learning you're innocent until proven guilty. So let's not forget that. You know, you are innocent until proven guilty in this country, and we've all heard the allegations, but at this point, they're just allegations. Even if, even if there are truth to the allegations, this commission still does not have the power to take action because the charter provision that you refer to says code of ethics established by law. Well, the two code of ethics established by law is Chapter 112 of the State Code of Ethics, which deals with corruptly securing a special benefit for yourself special financial gain, conflict of interest. None of that is here. None of that is here. The Palm Beach County Code of Ethics is similar. So there is no code of ethics by law, and that's what the charter restricts us to. We can't just go off, it doesn't say any law in the world, it says a code of ethics. So even if those allegations are ultimately proven, and frankly it'll be well beyond the four months, knowing the way the criminal justice system works, I think your hands are tied anyway. But let's not forget, we're all innocent until proven guilty in this country. Yes, sir. Bob Merkel, uh, 118 Marlin. Um, you probably don't know me, but I've represented the town twice in lawsuits under Chief Spano got sued. And did you say that there's no conflict of interest now between uh, councilmen? Vice Mayor and the town? 
No, no. The, the, the conflict of interest laws generally deal with financial gain. So in other words, if a commissioner um, were to approve a contract with a company that they owned, that's a conflict of interest right. because they're putting money in their own pockets. Um, okay. So the, when the code of ethics, almost all the code of ethics deal with putting money in your own pocket, doing something that benefits yourself or a family member. From what I understand, these allegations, there's nothing that benefits Commissioner Lucibella in terms of the town. There was no contract with the town. There was no money going into his pocket because of this incident that allegedly occurred on Saturday night. Okay, would you, so you would, would you condone him voting on settling a lawsuit that he's threatened against the town through his lawyer? Well, Would that's you a, condone that? That's certainly a hypothetical that I'm. No, that's not a hypo. That, that's, I mean, his lawyer said what he's, said what he's going to do. Lawyers don't kid around. At least, well, I say something, I mean it. So, you don't think that's a conflict? Well, of he's interest? not. He's not. Again, it's a hypothetical. So he's, he's not sitting up here tonight. There's no lawsuit that's been filed. There's one comment in a paper, and again, judge, jury, and executioner is not the role of this commission. No, I'm asking you, in your opinion. Would you let him vote? Of course on not. A that on if there if there was a lawsuit against the town, would you let him vote on the settlement? Of course not. That would be a conflict okay. of interest. That would be a conflict of interest. That would be okay. So if we have a conflict of interest now, excuse me, sir, you don't have a conflict of interest now. You have a hypothetical. If it snows tomorrow, I'm going to put galoshes on. Well, so you're, you're going me, off sir, on a it seems limb. To me with being a lawyer for 42 years and doing this type of work, exactly this type of work, for many, many years, 42 years. I've only got 39, so you well, got me beat by three And years. I've defended this town in, in lawsuits, tried them, that you've got to, if you've got a potential conflict of interest, a potential conflict of interest, if I'm a lawyer and I have a potential conflict of interest, I cannot take a case. I cannot handle that case. So we've agreed we have a potential conflict of interest here. No. No, you, you, you just you, said no, it, sir. No, I'm you not agreeing with it. it. No. Look, right, well, we're just, we're just, we, we can argue how many angels dance on the head of a pin, but there's no conflict of interest that exists today. You have a hypothetical that you think might happen if it snows tomorrow. It's not snowing tomorrow. Okay, so you... Potential conflict of interest that doesn't bother you. Not a hypothetical one that's far fetched, no. Well, it's far fetched. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. It's far fetched that he's going to be sitting up here in the next four months to vote on a settlement of a lawsuit that's not even been filed yet. That's far fetched, okay. yes. It's a con it'd be a conflict of interest for me, sir. Okay. Thank you. Next person? <clears throat> sure. Cindy Martell, 46 South Harbor Drive. So my question is, if he does come back, I mean, how is that going to be for all of us? It's just not going to be very comfortable for you guys. I mean, we're not going to like it. And you're going to have to work for it with him for four months? Well, you know, the town, I mean, we've been in this commission, well, the commission's been in awkward situations before, and we've always gone through it. So you just have to wait and see. You know, the biggest thing is waiting to see. And again, I can keep going, saying the same thing over and over again. But is waiting to see exactly what shakes out from the investigation, what the state attorney does. Once that happens, then you, I mean, at that point, you're now, you've been charged, but you haven't been convicted. No, right? but so you know what? what can we, you're just, you, it's just, you're just saying, oh, what if this happens? What if that it's happens? It's not what if, Jeff. You know, it is, this is a small town. Okay. We heard the gunshots. We came home. That was my husband's birthday. We came home from a dinner. And my kids are, like, hearing gunshots in our neighborhood. I mean, that's pretty, like, very sad. It's very I, sad for us. I, so I, we run there. We walk there. Who knows what it could have happened. I am not he was disagreeing drunk. with you. And you know, I, so I, I, I understand you, can't, you guys can't do or whatever or vote him out or whatever. But, you know, we're, all, we're very upset. So, all right. Thank you. I hear you. Again, maybe this will help. If there is charges that are filed by the state attorney's office, the governor does have the power to remove him from office, to suspend him from office. That's That rests in the governor's hand, and the governor takes that responsibility very seriously. In this county alone, I can think of several people in the last five years who have been suspended from office by the governor when charges were filed, even for misdemeanors like violating the Sunshine Law, which is a lot less serious than this. They have The governor has done that. So 
If the state attorney decides to file charges, there's a very high probability the governor will suspend the commissioner. Well, I have a feeling the governor has a lots of ears, including the media, that would let him know uh, if that happens. If the state attorney files charges, I'm not sure if the state attorney automatically a notifies the governor. Could do that also. A citizen could do that could as do, well. A citizen could do. Come on, Stella. Good evening, Stella Kolb, 204 Beachway. Um, I would just ask the commission to please stick with the forum. Yelling and talking back and forth when you're not on this podium is not allowed. I respect everyone's opinion to come up here and say whatever they want, but I resent the fact that anyone here speaks for me. So if a person comes up and says, we, well, who, I don't know who we is, but it's not me. Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Next person. Larry Feldman, Two Ocean Harbor Circle. Uh, is he still allowed to have guns? I mean, I think that's an issue that people are concerned about. Uh, again, he's been charged. I, I defer to the chief on that. But you've been, you know, he's not been convicted of a crime. He's been charged of one, but not convicted of a crime. However, he has been charged by the police department. We're awaiting final decisions from the state attorney's office. If they come in with premature to indicate that they may be detained. Hey, Chief, get your mic on. It would be premature at this point for us to address whether he would have any sanctions regarding the ownership of firearms until such time as at least we get a final decision from the state attorney's office. So I, I guess the question is, how can you guarantee the safety of the citizens? I mean, maybe they'll do it again. <laughs> well, we got amendment to the Constitution that allows citizens to hold guns. And we have a very lax uh, system of gun control here in the state, so we don't have a whole lot of control. We, town commission, doesn't have a whole lot of control over what private citizen can or cannot have in their home. Um, certainly a charge um, right now that has not been supported by proof at this point in time does not allow anybody to confiscate his guns. And I'm sure the NRA would have something to say if we tried to confiscate his guns. So our hands are tied on that issue, I think. All of the decisions that the police department has made over the last 12 days or so, I think that's where we're on day 12 now, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all of the decisions that have been made by the police department during the course of this investigation have always focused on the best interest of the residents. We will do everything in our power to make sure that the residents of Ocean Ridge are safe. Mr. Bonfiglio is correct. Citizens are allowed to own firearms in the United States and the state of Florida. It's our job to try and protect you from those people who should not. And if we get to a point where we believe anyone in town should not have the lawful right to carry one or is actually a danger to someone else, we will take the appropriate law enforcement action. Part of our response has been to be very measured in our delivery of information so as not to incite people who are perhaps not from Ocean Ridge or from Ocean Ridge um, to violence in any way, shape, or form. I would ask that everyone in the town remain calm, allow us to conduct our investigation, allow us to do our job, and most importantly, allow us to, to do the job you hired us to do as a police department, and that is to serve and protect the community as a whole. Um, and I think that everyone, I will speak personally, Everyone that has approached me has been very, very level-headed and understanding um, about this incident and the fact that it needs to follow a proper course of action. Well, thank you. Um, do you have any timetable on when the investigation will be done? Our investigation is fluid. It depends upon what is discovered as we go forward, just like any other investigation. It would be premature for me to give you a specific time and date. We will look at everything that we can find um, regarding the incident that occurred on October 22nd. And as things develop, we'll have a better idea of where we need to go with our investigation. So no, I can't give you a definitive timeline. We will do a thorough investigation 
in as timely manner as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is uh, Orly Carrad of True Ocean Harbor Circle. Um, I, for one, am very embarrassed by the newspaper accounts which have been occurring in rapid frequency <laughs> concerning the town of Ocean Ridge. Uh, I'm also concerned, since, since I like the Coastal Star very much, it's one of my go-to newspapers to read about what's going on in the area. Um, I, I'm concerned that Ocean Ridge will get the reputation that Gulfstream has, which, which is a very litigious one, and people are not buying in the area because of that, because the town always has to spend money on lawyers. So, you know, I plead that we get this resolved as soon as we can and clean up our acts because we don't want a reputation like that. Yes, ma'am. I, I appreciate the comment. Yeah. But I gotta say, it's, you know, clean up our act? I mean, it's, it's, we, it's hard to control people's actions. And once that action occurs, the only thing you can do is suffer the consequences of it, like we're doing, the commission is doing right now, and then try to do what we can to mitigate what has happened, find out what happens with the investigation, and then make the proper decision. So yes, I mean, I'm saying that. Well, there's a common, this, a, there's this, a common name in all of this. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. Yes, ma'am. In Ocean Ridge, so. Thank you. Uh, 6230 North Ocean Boulevard. Just going forward, is there any way of changing this charter for maybe behavior of anybody on the, um, you know, that, you know, so in the future, if something like this happens again, we don't have to, I mean, that somebody can be maybe removed immediately or, you know, because of their conduct, um, you know, that there's some kind of, you know, personal conduct clause or something like that that they, you know, are maybe taken off the uh, council? Well, I think they would, we would do something like we could have the attorneys look into that, but any type of that action would then still have to be dependent upon what investigation is concluded, when that investigation is concluded, then when that all that information comes out, then we could have some kind of ordinance that could do that. Yes, ma'am. But I would still wait until we have all the information. Yeah, I know, that's just the problem, though, because these things can be drawn out for a while. I'm just saying that maybe if there's something that if it comes up that you're arrested, uh, you know, see you later for, you know, until everything, you know, you have, you don't come back. I mean, I think an arrest, you know, kind of warrants uh, maybe getting thrown off. Well, I think, well, I, to be perfectly frank, I mean, there's been people been arrested and yeah. they didn't do the crime. So you're, 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 well, you're, you know, this is the same kind of thing. I mean, you are innocent and proven guilty. And I know that yeah. you want to get a quick end to this, but let's just be a little level-headed about it. I mean, yes, you don't, if right. the man is guilty. I'm just saying if there's something that, I mean, I would just think that, you know, this is, you know, as the woman before said this, this is just giving us a real black eye. Oh. I just moved to this community, and I didn't look in Gulfstream because of that. And now, I mean, this is, it's almost a joke. Yeah, well, let's face it, Ocean Ridge is a, is a very small town. Yeah. Okay, you've got... Four, last election was 1,427 registered voters. Mm -hmm. um, and we all, you know, we make this town, this town's probably the best small town I've ever seen anywhere up and down as far as this goes. You, it's close in the community, and when something like this happens, it affects all of us because, yeah. let's face it, it diminishes us as a community. So anything that in, diminishes our community affects all of us, and we really, yeah. you know, we feel bad about it. However, Having said that, you still have to be patient and wait till everything right. has come in before you make. I just decision. thought that maybe that there's something in the future that we can maybe, if there's something that can be done, that we don't have. You know, you have the the pitchforks here right now, and I just want to say I think the police are doing a fabulous job. I think these are very nice men that are on this force, and I beg pardon, and women. I'm sorry, I haven't seen. Oh yes, yeah, Nubia. Yes, but I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anyone else regarding Vice Mayor Lucibella? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
Zoanne Hennigan, 91 Island Drive South. Sort of didn't want to say anything, but maybe this would sort of sum it up. This is an unfortunate situation. Um, what has happened has affected the perception, the image, and the reputation of our town. And I, and I do believe that people are innocent until proven guilty and that we do need to let this come to a, a conclusion. However, if Commissioner Lucibella was here, I would tell him that in the best interest of Ocean Ridge, as elected officials, it's really imperative to put our town before our personal egos. And I know you guys cannot speak to Commissioner Lucibella, but if any of the people in the audience are personal friends with uh, Commissioner Lucibella, I would encourage him to step down. Thank you, Joanne. Thank I know you. his ego would probably not let him do that, but it would save the town a lot of heartache. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Bruce Kimmy, 12 Ocean Avenue. Being a resident here for 33 years, we have a history of bizarre behavior <laughs> on a number of our commissioners, and if Gail Asco, people that have been here for a while know that, so it's a shame. I feel for you, I feel for the chief, but I feel confident that it will be taken care of. Patience is a thing. Please pray for patience and tolerance because this will be dealt with, and I have total confidence in you. Thank you, Bruce. Anyone else? All right, we're going to close that portion of the public comment. However, now, if there's any public comment on the rest of the agenda, <laughs> come on up. We have budget? Anything? Well, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and move into the uh, approval of the consent agenda. Now, if you'd like, if you really don't want to hear, the, to stick around for the rest of the uh, boring stuff, you're more than welcome you know, to take a three-minute break. <laughs> Let's face it. We didn't come here for, you know, radios. Do you know how to clear a room? Do you know how to clear a room? Yeah. <laughs> Too, but I told Cindy, I appreciate what you were saying. It hit it on the head. Don't worry, I will. I mean, I looked at it too, and there's just nothing that we can do. I like your shirt, by the way. That is scary. Because if it starts with that, then what's next, right? You know? Wow. These violate any kind of code by law. See, the law is the key. Right. But we have to. But have to no one's broken the law. He's been charged. 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 He's been convicted. So there's no I mean, violation yet. Yeah. But did you see how much? Did you get arrested on the way home from Phoenix? Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, do you guys understand how Americans are Actually, you know, you know what's the scariest person? I know they don't. I'm dying of some Yes, three minute recess. Yeah. And we're still rolling out the story. We are? Thanks yeah. a lot. Are we on recess? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Recess. You're not on the road. We, we close public comment. What's that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Is it not on the loose bill thing? On or off the record? Okay. Uh, 
Don Magruder. Oh, you're going to start the uh, tape? Yeah. Okay, go Don ahead. Don Magruder, 9 Ridge Boulevard. Uh, I came before you when we went from uh, daylight, uh, from standard time to daylight savings time, 11 months ago, or however long it is, and, and talked about and talked about the um, traffic lights, or the, excuse me, the, uh, the um, Florida Power and Lights over the Ocean Ridge hammock, mm -hmm. and at the um, Point and Beach Inlet, that we need to put lights up there. And I, I saw you at the time I brought it up, you wrote down a note. I did. <laughs> and here we are. It's now back to uh, standard time, and you come over that hill, it's dark as can be right there at the Ocean Ridge Hammock. We really need to get some lights put there and probably over the, at the Boynton Beach Inlet. It's really kind of dangerous. You can't when you come around the corner, when you come around the curve? When you come over the, from the Ocean Ridge Hammock, if you're coming south, mm -hmm. if you come over that little, little rise in the road and you come down and there's a Yeah, the belly curve, right there? Yeah, you can see the sign that because it's, got re it's reflected. But you can't see on either side if there's people standing, waiting to cross. I, th I think the Jamie. town manager. Yeah, Jamie, didn't you uh, look into that? Well, I think when these are new lights. You're no, no, the right raised on. bars at the pedestrian stop so that it lights up like neon, so the drivers are more aware. No, I'm talking about. No, no, no. We're talking about street lights. Light. Right. I'm street talking street about lights. power light light. Too. On uh, Old Ocean, when yes, we're looking at a bid right now for s the illuminated stop bars that you're talking about, but I believe you're talking about overhead. I'm talking about additional Florida, about new the ones, street correct? Lights, yes. Where the, right, area. just yeah. north of the Boyne Beach Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right. Let's see, uh, do we have a, I need a motion for the approval of the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. There's a motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, announcement pro proclamation. Tomorrow's election day, finally. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Town Hall. The Board of Adjustment will be meeting on November 9th, 2016 at 8.30 in the morning inside Town Hall. Town Hall will be closed on Friday, November 11th in observance of Veterans Day. Town Hall will also be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 24th and 25th in observance of Thanksgiving Day. And the annual holiday celebration will be held on Friday, December 2nd at Town Hall beginning at 530. I hope you all attend. I should have brought this up when everybody was here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot more people in here. All right. Uh, let's go right on the reports. Jamie, we'll start. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of just two additional dates um, so people are aware on this Friday, the 11th, which is when Town Hall is closed for Veterans Day. We do have a drilling rig that we'll be putting one more well back here in the back of the parking lot for their DEP observation wells for um, historic fuel spill issues up there. In a week and a half from now, on the 17th through the 19th, we're currently scheduled to have a contract executed on resealing and striping of the town hall parking lot. That'll ride over a Thursday, Friday, <coughs> Saturday window. Um, so you need to be aware of that as well. Um, on, I believe it's Wednesday, the 16th of November. I just wanted to give a shout out to our Lieutenant Richard Jones, who will be graduating from the 50th Chief Executive Seminar in Tallahassee. Um, it's a program by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Florida Criminal Justice Executive Institute um, Policy Board. And Richard, congratulations on your studies. And congratulations, Rich. Congratulations on that. I also like you to know that we received a letter from the uh, Florida uh, Department of Revenue um, telling us that uh, we were completely compliant with our truth and millage, our trim certification process for the budget and the town this year. So that's a nice call out, no errors down there. Uh, finally, my written report is in your agenda backup package and by title, uh, the topics I covered are Hurricane Matthew, uh, DEP beach updates and the erosion issues. Uh, quick action by our PD on a, on a structure fire a couple weeks ago that um, prevented serious disaster. Our audit selection committee met a week or so ago and the audit uh, for, uh, or the RFP for a new audit um, uh, selection company is in circulation now and we're awaiting for those uh, returns and then the committee will meet rank those returns and bring them to the commission 
earmarked for December at this time, if all goes smoothly there. As uh, Ms. Bingham mentioned, we've uh, got confirmation on the DOT red valve for the Ocean Avenue retention area. Um, we're also letting out a, a series of contracts right now on the Woolbright detention area, and if any of you have noticed, there's been some heightened uh, spraying and treatments going on down there, but we're going to do a massive uh, extraction of all the exotic weeds and plants and various things that have uh, overgrown in that area, which will return some uh, additional efficiency uh, to, to the facility as was designed. Um, attended the Urban Administration Policy Committees of the Florida League, which uh, dealt with uh, predatory public records laws, um, um, better municipal control and home <coughs> rule zoning and codes over short-term and vacation rentals, and then attempts to uh, align local municipal elections with state and national elections. Those are priority uh, legislative issues that are going on. And then finally, I uh, also um, pleaded with everybody to wait for our internal investigations on the incident that we all met on earlier. Uh, so with that, um, there's full detail in the report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Come on up, Jerry. One real, one quick question on that Woolbright detention area. Mm -hmm. um, don't you left out the fact that we maybe may have a company come in there and give us a price on cleaning out the that the uh, drainage part of it. Yeah, that'll be secondary after the removal of all the exotic materials because we believe that uh, once the overgrowth of the invasive and exotic materials that are in there are removed it will automatically improve the functioning of the subterranean drain system and we have a company that's looking on looking specifically into that infrastructure as well through cameraing and probing those pipe systems okay. we did do a spot check on it and it was flowing nicely but because of the dysfunction of the topside planting biosphere if you will um, that will go a long way in in weeding all that out and infilling the appropriate plants that would go in there to help filtrate that area. Okay, Jerry Magruder, 9 Ridge Boulevard, Ocean Ridge, Florida, a resident of Ocean Ridge for 31 years, the main supporter of the drainage system in Ocean Ridge. And the next person that was a main supporter is the gentleman sitting beside you, Mr. Bon Biglio. The 32nd day of that project finishing, that project never worked efficiently. I have begged for 10 years and three months to get this fixed fixed properly. I want to thank you for finally getting it started. If we would have been hit with Matthew, that little community of Rich Boulevard, Hibiscus, Exora, and Midland would have been destroyed. And it would have been everybody on the Commission's fault, whoever past, present, and now, because nobody would listen. That does not work. We had a commissioner, mayor, that felt that we had to have leave those damn palm trees in the middle. Those are rotten. They're filled and infested with termites. Everybody in the neighborhood has termites. They need to be taken out, and I mean out. You need to pay attention to people that are begging and pleading and asking to have this thing fixed and fixed properly. I don't shoot guns in neighborhoods. I don't yell and scream. I just beg. It's not working. It needs not Miss, oh, what's her name, Lisa Trapepi. It needs professional people that know what the heck they are doing and get it done right. You are here to protect me. That's what you said up there all through the last half of the meeting. And I want to be protected. And protecting is drainage. Get it fixed. You got some people that are doing it. And I want to make sure, and I mean make sure with Mr. Bonfiglio, that this thing, when it's done, works right that it doesn't flow water into it 24-7 when there's no rain for the last 10 weeks. Because I've had it. I have been sick for 10 and a half years with this drainage behind me, physically ill. Mr. Bonfigli sees, sees me getting physically ill constantly because of this thing, because it's got junk in it, sick junk. Nobody has to put up with that. We're, that's why we're doing well, it. Well, you haven't been doing it. I worked we're doing it now. And I appreciate it. I really do. But it's not going to be signed off by me or I know Mr. Bonfiglio until we see it work right. Because it, it, I'm tired of it. I am really physically tired of it. And I appreciate everything you're doing now. But I mean it. I've, I want to see it done right. Because it hasn't been right. And it has not been proper. 
And if it, Matthew would have hit, it would have been a <coughs> sadness for this town. You think this, if you have sadness now, it would have been horrific. And you wouldn't have been able to have enough I, I'm sorry's and I apologies in your heart for it. Take care. Thank you. That actually sparked a couple of questions. Are some of these palms considered the exotics that they're removing? The, the three or four palms that are barren trunks that you see in the middle of the detention area will come out as part of this contract, uh, along with the invasive vines and other uh, foreign plant material. It's all being dredged out of there. Excuse me, they all need to be taken out that are in the, in the basin. Yeah, if there's about four of them. The well, there's four trees. that are dead, but there's three that are struggling to be alive. The rest, the, what's ever in the basin needs to be taken out because if they're going to die within the next three years. Well, they, everything that's in there is not supposed to be there is going to be removed. Right. That's, so the, the that's what we're part of it. I mean, there. they shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Exactly. Well, I, I mean, actually, my recollection is that those palms were there to begin with. They were. Yes, they were. But, but they, they wanted to be salvaged. They were, not, they, were not, um, they were not planted as part of the uh, retention detention pond. They, they, those were there. Yeah. They have been right. there for but a I'm long sure there's time. other plants that are there that weren't yeah. there. And but uh, but the bay. problem is that um, the, w the water is, is essentially rotting the roots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it but it was, it was somebody whimsy to keep them there because they thought they looked cute. And secondly, so we don't face this problem every five years, is it? Sh shouldn't we have like some kind of a town schedule? I beg your pardon, but every five years that detention pond is to be totally drained out, cleaned out, replanted and restored. That is what the provision says in the plan. But you didn't do that. You meaning the town. You're the town now. The, you meaning the so town. Jamie, perhaps there could be a schedule on a detention pond so it perhaps alleviates some of Jerry's concern. Absolutely, Commissioner. The uh, facility is about 11 years old now. Um, there was a proposal about a year ago to do this kind of overhaul we're talking about, but for whatever reason it wasn't done. So we've reinitiated it with your direction. Uh, the, the town has been paying for ongoing maintenance, but I don't think it's been sufficient, so we're trying to up that schedule to make sure it is sufficient in the future. Thank you, Jamie. Any other questions for Jamie? Glenn? Any questions? You're, you're shot out? No, I, no I pun intended? I, I think I've said enough tonight. No? you said <laughs> enough tonight? Chief? Other than I hope you'll have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you. Attached, you'll find the monthly report for September along with the fire EMS report. Uh, Chief Joseph of the Boynton Fire Department was going to come tonight and introduce himself. I suggested that perhaps with the agenda, as long as it was, that it would be best if he came in December, so he is going to try and make an appearance in December. Uh, he is the newly um, appointed chief of the Boynton Fire Department and has settled in finally and would like to come and meet all of you. Uh, in addition to that, Something that is not on my report is uh, an article that was in the paper. I would like to bring credit to the police department regarding a theft case that was solved and has successfully uh, resulted in the recovery of $100,000 in stolen jewelry from one of our residents' homes. Um, the detective and Lieutenant Jones were able to serve a search warrant, recover all of the jewelry that was reported stolen, and discover that the individual had actually taken more uh, jewelry than the victim actually knew had been taken. Uh, so we recovered more than she thought was stolen, family heirlooms and such. I would caution everyone and ask everyone to remember that it is imperative for you to know who your cleaning staff is and who they are bringing into your house. This was not a stranger breaking into a house. This was someone who was trusted, who brought someone into the home as an additional person um, and, and you know, thankfully we were able to, to meet with that individual and, and take him to custody and recover as much as I would say 95% of everything that was reported stolen. Um, so it's imperative that everybody knows, especially this time of year with the holidays coming and all of the activities that you have going on, uh, be ever vigilant who you are on site when you approach them. Thank you, Chief. Great job. Yeah. All right, moving on to our second reading and adoption of ordinances. Tracy, could you read that, please? Ordinance number 615, an ordinance of the town of Ocean Ridge, Florida, amending its code of ordinances by amending chapter one, general provisions, section one through three, definitions to clarify the definition of family, chapter 67, buildings and building regulations, article seven, building standards by creating division three, 
occupancy limitations to clarify such limitations and to provide for a reasonable accommodation process for persons with disabilities and or a handicap providing for codification, repeal of conflicting ordinances, severability, and an effective date. Thank you. Glenn, do you want to bring us up to speed on this? Um, I think everybody, uh, sorry. I think we already had conversations about this, and if it's a reasonable accommodation, it's, uh, oh, is that not on? Okay. Uh, I think we already had conversations about the need to um, develop this ordinance to provide for a reasonable accommodation uh, process. Uh, most communities have adopted this at this point, and we just think the town should go ahead and do that to protect itself. Okay. Did I hear a motion? Um, I move that we adopt ordinance number 615. Um, this is the second reading, right? Second reading. Yeah. On the second reading? Second. It's motion second. Any public comment? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to ordinance number 616. Tracy? Ordinance number 616, an ordinance of the Town of Ocean Ridge, Florida, amending its code of ordinances by amending Chapter 67, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 3, Technical Codes and Other Construction Standards, Division 2, Administration and Enforcement, Section 67-55, Construction Board of Adjustments and Appeals, to provide that certain appeals may be made to the Board of Adjustment, providing for codification, repeal of conflicting ordinances, severability, and an effective date. All right, Glenn. Again, this is uh, to be sure that when the Board of Adjustment, um, which is active, can hear the appeals that normally is heard by the Construction Board, because that Construction Board really hasn't been active in a long time. It's just to provide the process uh, to have those appeals heard in a timely way. All right. Motion? Uh, I move that we adopt ordinance number <coughs> 616 on the second reading. There's second. second. Motion second. Any public comment? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, moving on to our action items. Request for building permit fee rebate. Tracy or Chief, you want to? Or Tracy? Go ahead, Tracy. He's first. Okay, Delray Garden Center has requested that the commission approve a rebate for the penalty portion of the building permit fees charged by the town. They began work without a permit at 5002 Old Ocean Boulevard and were charged the penalty fees of $1,515 as per town code. The complaint of the work being done without a permit came into the police department on September 2nd, and Delray Garden Center applied for the permit on September 27th. The building official and town engineer reviewed the plans, and the permit was issued on September 30th. In the meantime, before a permit was issued, the contractor continued working without a permit. The work has since been completed, and final inspections were completed on October 26th, all of which have passed. Um, I just wanted to mention, too, that there had been some question as to whether town staff had discretion in reducing the penalty fees, and we don't. We have to charge um, what is in the ordinance, um, and it's up to the town commission to overturn any penalty fees. All right. <clears throat> Chief, do you anything to add to that? Add to this? No, that, that's confusing me because that's different than what we discussed last week, Jamie. The, the town is four times, I the, thought. State law is twice the penalty uh, in state statute. The town has it written in, in its codes as four times the penalty, which is more restrictive, if you will, or, or uh, a more severe penalty than state code, which you can do on, on local ordinances. Um, but Tracy's correct. There's no administrative overview of that. The only appeal is to the town commission uh, to reduce that number. And, you, and it can't be reduced less than the state number, I take it? Um, well, the state allows up to two times penalty by statute. So I don't know if they allow or if you could do less than that. I, I didn't research that piece of it. Um, but you can do more than what state is by local ordinance. And that's what you have in the situation here. So you're the only appeal board that can uh, r provide relief under that provision right now. Can I just make a clarification? We do have in the ordinance, um, in the town codes, that it is double the fee based on the amount of the job. So if it's uh, less than $5,000, it's double. And it's four times the total amount of the permit fee uh, if the work exceeds $5,000. And this work did exceed $5,000. That's why it was four times the fee. 
All right. <clears throat> What's the pleasure of the commission? Is anybody, I mean, this is a, go ahead. Is anybody here from Delray Garden Center? Mm -hmm. Well, you're looking at me. No, I'm not. I'm just no, looking to see so, I, mean, no. I mean, to put it this way, I mean, in defense of Delray Garden Center, they're, they're in this town a lot. They do a lot of work here. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, I do know the owner personally. I have not talked to him about this, this situation. But, um, you know, this particular situation, they had a, I believe it was a uh, wooden, retaining wall made out of uh, railroad ties or something or other, and they took it out and replaced it with rocks. And that's what the uh, the whole permit issue is about, pretty much. I know I'm looking at you, well, Chief, because I, I'm trying I'll, to get I'll, a I'll weigh more. in on this one, if you don't mind, uh, because I delivered I've been, I the... I asked uh, twice already. Because, <laughs> I, because I delivered the town <laughs> engineer to inspect it uh, right. when we received the, uh, the report. Uh, there was a retaining wall that had been in existence for as long as I can remember, which is at least 10 years, uh, that had been made out of railroad ties. That was completely removed. The whole project was denuded of any plants, and there was Phil brought in. When she observed it, she observed that the retaining wall, she felt, was going to be holding back soil that had changed the elevation, and that she didn't see any proper screening behind it. Um, for drainage issues, and her concern was the drainage and the elevation changes, uh, which is why the decision was made that this particular project required a permit. The building official agreed with her based upon his observation, and the job was stopped. Um, my only concern from, a, in, from an enforcement standpoint is they did apply for permits. However, they started work again prior to receipt of the permits. I think that, with all due respect, once they were notified that they needed the permits and they started to apply for the permits, um, they should have adhered to our town code and not begun work until such time as they had the permits issued um, and knew that the permits as presented would be approved. So when the fill's sitting there and if a rainstorm came, what would have happened? It would have been down Douglas. <laughs> right. That's what I, I'm getting at. So, yeah. in other words, if I had a pile of dirt in my yard and a storm came and washed it out in the street, you'd probably be giving me a code violation. So perhaps they were doing it to try to prevent that. <laughs> Just saying. There are, there, are, there, are, there are provisions in the code to allow them to cover and to, to work properly so that they do not allow any... Um, spill out onto the town's right-of-way or the town's road. Based upon my personal observation, they didn't make any attempt to do that. They just stopped work, and then when they got, when they presented to the town their request for permit, um, at some point shortly after that, they began to do work again as if they had been issued a permit. When I read the, um, the item in our agenda, that issue concerned me, that they um, you know, I mean, I can understand a dispute as to whether a permit is needed or not needed and, you know, get clarification on that. But when they're told to stop, they need to stop. They don't, you know, I mean, they started work, the work again. It's not a big number. And I, I, see, I saw the work. It looks nice. There's no, it, it looks very attractive, better than it was before. But then, I mean, nobody shows up to explain this to us. I, I mean, I got a problem with that, too. Mm -hmm. Either the homeowner or the, the, the Delray should should be here and say, hey, you know, here's what happened, um, uh, and we're sorry, it won't happen, because they do a lot of work here. I see their trucks all mm -hmm. the time. Um, so that's the dilemma I have, and it's... Well, look, <clears throat> let's not belabor this. Yeah. I mean, you give them, if you want to give them anything off, give them off. If you don't want to, I, I would suggest just penalize them twice, two times. <clears throat> so you give them 50% refund? Or so actually, no, 50% of the penalty. 50% of the penalty. Of the penalty. No, in other words, instead of multiplying it by 4, which brings us to 2035, multiply 505 by 2, which brings it to what, 1110? Well, no, you're going to give 50% of the penalty. 50% of, yeah. of the penalty would be 7,500 is 1,500. 75,750. Yeah. 75,750. Yeah. 75, so, so you take 2,035, 15, 
seven five seven fifty that would be eight two seven you could use the right zero, zero. Uh, can we <laughs> make it easy can we just say hey, uh, here's how about like this tracy give them fit back 50 percent of the penalty fee I'm, is that what you guys yes. went yeah. down? Okay, is that a motion? I I'm, I'm move that we re rebate, give them a credit for one half of the penalty fee. Second. Motion, second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And, and that's with, you know, don't do this again, guys. We know you come around here a lot, you know? <laughs> you, can, you may be able to convey that to Delray Gardens later, okay? Yes, sir. All right, number 14, proposals for phase two of police radios. Hal? This is the second and final phase of the P25 compliant switch for us to go to the Palm Beach County radio system that's um, been proposed for the last two fiscal years. Um, we budgeted $80,000. This final phase um, purchases the last 15 portable radios and equipment for the officers. In addition, there are some software items that are included in this portion that are required by Palm Beach County for us to program the radios <coughs> and be compliant with their system so that we can be interoperable. Um, the total quotes come at $78,826 for the second phase, and I'm requesting that you authorize you to purchase those radios as soon as possible, and the reason we're coming before you is because it is in excess of $25,000 and it does require that you're operating it. And it's within the budget already. It is a budgeted item. It is currently within the budgeted a lot money allotted for this program. All right. So you want to make a motion for this? Make um, a motion that we approve phase two of the police radio project. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And last but not least, discussion <coughs> regarding budget amendments. All right, Jamie. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll try to keep this brief to leave it for your questions and any information you want to get. At our October 3rd uh, general meeting, our special meeting of the town commission, you adopted a tentative or final F FY17 annual budget. Um, that budget was presented to you on the 3rd, and there was a series of um, highlighted changes that were made to it that are uh, incorporated in the budget that you adopted. In addition to that um, adoption, there was a request made of me to go back and look at the, um, the multipliers of the human <coughs> resources part of the town, which I did. And in your backup tonight, you have uh, the first several pages of this section are the um, the calibrated changes to all the multipliers for um, uh, salaries and benefits for the employees. There's a chart of um, all those various calculations and how they're derived. There is a page with the, um, the various percentages and how they're used in the multipliers. And then there's an indication on the fourth page of that backup that um, from a budgeting standpoint, uh, what you normally have is you've got a larger uh, retirement assessment than the actuarials would show you, but for budgeting purposes, that has to be a little bit larger. Um, initially, on the budget that was approved on the 3rd, and since the first adoption of the tentative budget, those figures were projected at the maximum amount for full raises for all the employees uh, across the spectrum. So what these calculations represent is going back and applying anniversary dates and specific calculations for all the employees, which then generated um, new numbers as to what uh, the town would basically save. And this calculation has always been in favor of the town. In other words, we always budgeted more money than we knew it would cost. So this represents savings back to the town budget in terms of recalibrating these on anniversary dates and multipliers. On page two of your number 15 backup item, uh, you'll see that those recalibrations yield $83,996 that we believe will be returned to the town budget. The direction at the last meeting, at the October 3rd meeting, was just to earmark that money to contingency. There is already uh, 72,000, let's get that page. 
There's already $72,052 on page 23 in the budget for contingency. If you did nothing else this evening, this additional projected savings of 83,996 would be added to that contingency line item for whatever purpose you would direct it to during the year along the way. And I would remind everybody that money in any budget, uh, previous or current, that is unexpended uh, during the course of the year automatically returns to the town and its general reserves and revenues. So if it's not spent, it doesn't get spent. It gets returned to the town. So you're um, looking at 156, 048 total um, for the two? 167. I didn't add it up to this yesterday. Did I? Not right. 156. All right. <coughs> I got 156, 048. 048. Um, just one other note on that. The, uh, in the cover memo here, um, I called out that there are one, two, th there are six items um, that what I called were on the police department wish list that have been appeared on the capital investment plan for all the meetings we've talked about on the budget, and those are listed there. These items, that, as they're listed in this chart, are still technically unfunded. They have not been approved by this commission. So I broke them out here in case there is anything. There was a desire to talk about some of these items at previous meetings, and there is now additional monies available should some of these uh, emerge as priorities, and they could be earmarked at this time, or they can be earmarked at a later time in the budget year if you decide um, all of a sudden, you know, whichever item, tasers or video equipment or whatever would be a priority at that time, that can be allotted at any time during the budget year. But I broke them out here, especially uh, there's a line item there of the automated license plate recognition system, which we talked about over a few meetings. And that's a very individually expensive item. Um, there is not currently the total amount in the in the new combined contingency to cover that, but there are other ways you can cover that through reserves, et cetera, if you wanted to go there. Um, in addition to that, you have the full um, updated budget behind your backup here, and so any item in any department, uh, if you had a priority to fund something additional or take something away, would similarly move if you wanted to make an amendment to this document as it stands. And with that, I will just entertain your questions okay. and comments. Any questions? I had one question, which is, oh, which is for the chief. When you put in the automated license plate reader, does that have to be done all at one time? In order for the system to work, yeah. um, the backbone of the system has to be put in place. The placement of cameras, as they say, which are actually just opto-characteristic recognition systems. Yeah. Uh, can be done piecemeal. It's more cost effective for us to do the four nodes to oh, start okay. with than it is to piecemeal it in like we've done in the past. So the most, the, the item on this list, the, the one that is most needed would be what, the telephone system? If I were to go down this list and give you my um, professional opinion, I would say that the new telephone and voicemail system is of up absolute importance that's how we operate the town not just the police department that is not just a police department uh, budget request that's for the town's telephone system uh, it is on its last legs we have been told for three years that there are no parts we have one person that we know that can fix it um, and we reset it on a regular basis the next thing is uh, how old is that person pardon me how old is that person <laughs> He's a young man of in his 60s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. I would okay, also so add next, that the we next, have the next two most issues with a short shelf life. <laughs> the, next, <laughs> but the, next most the, next, the next most critical <laughs> issue for the town, in my opinion, is the video and audio system for the town hall. That's what monitors the parking lot, our prisoners. Um, those kind of things that we have to have operational 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, for this particular property. Uh, after that, you know, I would honestly say that, that 
we can probably look at all of those other things individually. There are some issues with the license plate recognition system that are developing that may assist us in saving some money over the next couple of months. Um, it is still a desirable project. I think it is um, a wonderful thing to enhance the security of the town, but I will remind everyone it is not the silver bullet. Uh, it is an expensive project. Um, there is a project being done in another community that is almost identical to that which we would like to do, which I think I would prefer to see their development of that project and then come back to you and tell you whether I think we can um, accomplish the same goal with less nodes of cameras or with um, some interagency cooperation that will save us some money over the $225,000. All right, so what about the taser weapons, the uh, redundant SIS alarm, and the The redundant SIS cameras. alarm receiver is a request from a commissioner to have that on the shelf. Um, that is an item that we can generally get next day. Um, it is a backup to our current alarm system for monitoring residents' alarms. Um, if that system were to fail, I am confident that you would fund it from contingency at that point <coughs> in time. So if that is a budget consideration that you, you want to consider, I would suggest you do that. The taser. Um, electronic control weapons are a less than lethal, lethal alternative for our officers. They are widely used. They are um, an option between hands-on force and deadly force that do not currently exist in the agency. Um, I would ask that you consider that also um, from a, a officer safety and liability standpoint. However, I understand budgets are, have to be considered in this. The Reconic Covert Cameras for Investigation are portable cameras that have the ability to be placed in specific areas where specific crimes are occurring to gather information and evidence to support our investigations. Um, that $2,500 cost, I think, is something that I would ask if there is money available um, would be a great benefit to our investigations in the department, <coughs> especially when we uh, <coughs> encounter those people who have a propensity to break into cars in specific areas as we have over the past couple of years. We can deploy those uh, at a very inexpensive cost and gather evidence to support our criminal cases and perhaps arrest some of these folks that are coming over and committing crimes. Um, that we don't have the ability to do right now. Uh, how long is the battery life on this? It depends upon how many photographs. They're generally motion activated. They're not a continuous video camera. So they're placed <coughs> in an area. Um, they're, they're, they're focused on a specific area where you believe you're going to get your best evidence. Mm -hmm. And so it depends upon how much movement and motion goes by as to how long the batteries last. I've been researching this and, and so has the lieutenant and in it well in excess of 24 hours in a very very high volume area and up to a week in, in some areas where you don't have the high traffic okay all right so if you take the covert cameras the taser the telephone system and the video and audio that's 65,000 I would like to have a separate discussion on, on the tasers. I think they're, compared to the utility, I think they're a little bit dangerous, especially when you consider, you know, the use of force and, you know, attempting to make people comply. It's going to be. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's going to, I think, I think it's a, it's a crutch for police not to use negotiating skills to try to get potential arrestees to comply. You simply just torture them with electricity uh, and, and, and get to get their compliance as opposed to um, talking them down. And I, I, think, I think that's something we need to have a discussion about. That's my concern with tasers, especially when, you know, you read so much about them causing significant personal injury and death when you don't know whether or not the recipient of the taser and the electric shock 
is susceptible to, you know, extremely susceptible to the, that kind of shock and will really hurt them. We could be facing significant liability for that. That's my concern. So I think we ought to have a, a separate, have it placed as a separate issue. Makes sense. Yeah. Second question, which kind of triggered from the incident a couple of weeks ago, last okay. weekend. No. Um, would the body camera, body cameras, have you looked into the cost for body cameras for our officers? Because if we'd have had operable body cameras for the incident with May, Vice Mayor Luchabella, we would have a pretty good record of exactly what happened that evening, <coughs> as opposed to a he said, she, sh he said, she said situation. So I'd like you to look into um, the cost for outfitting all of our officers with body cameras to record encounters with the general public. Okay, well, I'm, 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 I'm not opposed to that. Uh, um, the cost of the body camera program, um, I have done some research on it. It can range from $300 for the camera to $3,000 for a camera. It is uh, the initial cost, I will tell you, seems to be very reasonable. It is the storage cost and the maintenance of the systems that tend to be very costly. Um, I have not approached the commission with that because I have been um, watching other agencies deploy them and watching what's going on in the country. And to be honest with you, with you up until recently, there has not been a call for them in Ocean Ridge. Um, I will, I respect your position on the electronic control weapons. Um, having come from an agency that deployed them and did training with them and had specific guidelines, um, I'll be more than happy to prepare something to discuss with you on that. Um, I would anticipate that I can give you a cost for um, outfitting the agency minimally with body cameras by the next meeting. Okay, and you said <coughs> one of the issues was data storage essentially for the... With the, with the current public records laws and the privacy concerns with body-worn cameras and the restrictions on where they can and cannot be used, um, there are some costs associated with redaction and review mm -hmm. that um, were discussed at great length at both the Florida Police Chiefs Association Conference and the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference. Um, so nationally and internationally, actually, um, to the point that many agencies that are deploying them are finding that they have to hire a full-time person to deal with the public records and of uh, review and redaction of that video. Um, in addition, there are storage responsibilities because they are public records, which would require, because what I, what I found is, is it, it's not like the old in-car video cameras where we had a VHS tape and we popped mm -hmm. it in there for eight hours and we took it out and put it in a cabinet and 30 days we did away with it. Um, there's a whole bunch more to this because we're taking those body-worn cameras into areas where people have a right to privacy. Uh, we're taking those body-worn cameras as a, re as a first responder into areas where people are being supplied first responder services, medical first aid, and so if someone comes and asks for, for a copy of that or those things, we have to be able to properly redact those things. So there, mm -hmm. there are costs over and above. I have, a, I have a cost on a particular camera, which is a very good camera. It's $339. It sounds, it sounds very simple, but much like your request to discuss the electronic control weapons, I think the body cameras need to be discussed and there needs to be some full disclosure as to what the town will cost they will incur to, to implement a program such as that. I, I think there's also a discussion whether we want them. I mean, we're a low crime area. You're community police. And once you introduce 
this electronic surveillance of the police dealing with citizens, you're gonna you're gonna destroy that fragile relationship. Okay. Pretend somebody came up to your house and you had a code violation going on in your garage where you were putting up drywall you shouldn't be putting up. So then the policeman with the body cam goes in there and now you come out and you go into a rage and say, no, it's a smaller project. All that's now caught on tape and it also forces the police to perhaps do something that they might otherwise try to work around. I think it's probably problems. Well, I, I honestly believe that if folks are doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason, that recording what officers do is not a bad thing. Uh, I think that it's a discussion that the commission needs to have, and I think that it's a decision that you need to, to consider amongst the commission. Mm -hmm. I have personally worn body cams, um, and I was aware that I was being recorded. I was aware that everyone else was being recorded. Um, I can't tell you that it didn't change my demeanor on occasion and make me more cognizant of the fact that I needed to be more professional. But I, I can tell you that when negative interactions happened that required me to act as a law enforcement officer and take someone into custody, I didn't even think twice about that sooner. Yep, I understand that. All right, <clears throat> well, let's, we're talking about a budget amendment for tonight. Right. If you wanna mm -hmm. talk about the but cameras, you can always meet the chief. And if you wanna bring it up, uh, Commission meeting, later commission meeting, let's go ahead and do it. But in this particular instance, let's go back to the covert cameras. Uh, you have, um, you may have an issue with the, the, what did you call it, electronic what? Taser? It's tasers. The taser, it's yeah, the common it. name for it is taser. It's an electronic control Electronic weapon. control. It's, it's, electronic it's, control. It's, it's referred to as a dart firing stun gun. Okay. Um, there are any number of things. Got it. It's, it's Got it. I'll just... <laughs> All right, so if you, you want to not do that one, so the telephone system is a given. We have to do that. I think we got to do telephone. New video and auto security for town hall, another given, and the covert cameras for the investigation. Right. I don't have any those add up with those items. Those add up to 38,500, um, those three items, if you wanted to earmark for those items. Okay, now is there anything else in the budget that you'd like to see removed or added in there? other than these three items we just talked about? No. Nope. No? No, Jim? All right, then, then somebody make a motion for those three items be added. I'm, I move that we add um, $2,300 for the new telephone and voicemail system for town services. Uh, to the budget, we add um, $1,300. $13,000. Oh, 13000 I'm sorry. Getting late. And <laughs> new, new video and audio security for town hall the budget we add twenty five hundred dollars for reconnects covert cameras for investigations to um, to the budget for this year is there a second second, second. okay motion and second any other discussion yes ma'am chairman Gruder, nine ridge boulevard three years i know Three years you promised me it's going to be bought and it's going to be paid for and it's going to be up. And every year you knock me down. Why are you knocking me down now? Because every year something else comes up that yeah, may change. Yeah, but we it. need it. I Look, know. the lady just got robbed again. A hundred thousand. I got. I lost close to. My God, I can't even. Take, can't, I can't remember the money. And my investigation, it's still pending, isn't it? I don't. Nobody told me my case was closed. We, we do not have any active leads on your case. Yeah. But see, if we develop anything, we will certainly go uh, forward Jerry, with I, it. Jerry, the technology is changing. For then it was last year was that the DOT didn't want us putting the cameras on there right away. Every time there's, a, there's something that happens, it ends up giving us another pause. Now, Delray is the city that he that uh, the chief was alluding to that is uh, putting up their camera system, and that's where we're going to see if we can get some savings from them and watch what they and so do. So what, I have to wait for another budget? I, I'm, I'm I, I'm saying, asking you. I'm do I? I'm best. asking you a question. Do I have to wait another budget year? Unless something develops between now and the next budget, and somebody gets hurt or somebody gets robbed no, again, that something develops regarding these cameras where we can. Add, right now, we can't even put them on any of the right of ways. The DOT but right the of ways. Town of town of town of Palm Beach put them off the right of ways and hung them over, and they and they got it in. 
you're correct. They did. They did. I know they, they were, did. They I looked were, at every they one. Were, they were also told to remove them, and they came to a negotiated agreement uh, with the state of Florida. Currently, we are not allowed to place them on the right of way, and we would have to enter into a private agreement with landowners to do that. That they Del got Ray, it in. Delray is in the process of, of negotiating that now, and I would like to, to see their project go forward um, a little further. It, it may, in fact, enhance our ability to do it at a cheaper rate, also. So we're every single budget year we're looking into it. We haven't dropped it. It's just an ongoing thing. I, I, that's the best I can tell you. Because if you put them on private property, then you'd have to, how do you negotiate that? You'd have to negotiate mm -hmm. that as a, well, Jim, you're the one who brought yeah, that up. Yeah, we need to, we need to get, you know, some sort of license or easement on the property to erect these and, and, and continue to main, maintain the units. It, need, it has to be recorded because if property owners sell their property, the new purchaser is going to want to know what he's getting and what it, easements exist. Um, each one is going to cost several thousand dollars for surveys to plot out the land that needs to be granted for an easement to construct. We're talking or, four, aren't we? And, and, and then the pr another problem arises because of sight lines. You know, how far off can you go from the roadway with these cameras in order to get the proper sight line to get the cameras? That's another issue. So, you know, it's not, it's not. I mean, we're not talking 20. We're talking four, aren't we? I mean, like, I understand it's four. Yes, but they have to be in the right spot. I understand they have to be in the right spot. Jay, we've been looking quite a bit. The chief has been working diligently on it, and so is the town commission. You know, it's just we're trying to get it to where it'll actually work for the money that we're going to be spending on it. Huh? I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna watch Delray diligently, trust me. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Don. Half of Nine Ridge Boulevard. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you uh, look at the um, tag recognition cameras in conjunction with the body cameras, is there any way that you can virtualize or get one server where you can virtualize and have that server maybe serve both purposes? That's <coughs> my question. That as you go down that path, you might be able to just have one server that can serve um, both both of those. <coughs> programs if you get the right size server and virtualize part of it so suggestion I, you're, you're correct it's not it's not necessarily that we can't do it it's a matter of we have to have the backbone and infrastructure and we can virtualize servers we, we currently do that with our in-house computer system now there still is a cost to virtualize yes, servers. It, might be a, it might be a reduced cost over what thank you the thank you chief what was the total amount on that before we take a vote those three items add up to 38,500 and currently the projected balance and contingency is 156,048. So it would come off that line item and go into police equipment capital funding. Okay. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And tomorrow's election day. Go vote. Wow. Exciting, everybody vote. Two, two exciting nights in a row. <laughs>